Nearly 290 million years ago, in the dawn of the Permian period, a series of cataclysmic volcanic eruptions tore through what is now central New South Wales in Australia. In this prehistoric landscape, long before the age of dinosaurs, enormous volcanoes roared to life. Vast magma chambers emptied in titanic blasts, each eruption likely rating a volcanic explosivity index of 7 or more, hurling tens to hundreds of cubic kilometres of ash and molten rock skyward. The collapsing volcanoes left behind gigantic cauldron-like craters, known as calderas, spanning several kilometres across. These calderas, possibly akin to supervolcanoes in scale, were ringed by towering rims of shattered rock. As the fury subsided, the land bore gaping scars, steaming caldera basins that would slowly cool and solidify. Ash blanketed the region, and rivers of tuff and lava flowed, crystallising into the rock now called the Rylestone Volcanics. It was a scene of both utter devastation and crude beauty, the birth of a volcanic complex destined to be hidden by time. In the ensuing millennia, nature gently reclaimed the surface. Rain and wind softened the volcanic badlands, and life cautiously returned. Thick layers of sediment from an ancient inland sea and swampy forests, the Proto-Sydney Basin, gradually entombed the calderas under sand and shale, preserving their forms as if in a time capsule. Coal-bearing sediments eventually blanketed the area, turning the once fiery calderas into subterranean fossils of a forgotten world. For nearly 290 million years, the Barra Creek and Three Hills calderas lay silent and buried, their majestic cliffs and vents sealed beneath up to 60 metres of rock and soil. No mountain betrays their presence today, only rolling pastures and subtle hills hint at the awesome events that forged the land so long ago. This is the story of two massive calderas in New South Wales whose existence were only just discovered. We have partnered again with Geology for this sponsored video, and I'm thrilled to share an update on my skincare journey. As we often see in Geology, great things take time, but luckily with Geology, I've noticed visible improvements in my skin surprisingly fast. Skincare doesn't have to be complicated or overwhelming. Whether your concern is acne, wrinkles, or general skin health, Geology makes achieving your skincare goals incredibly straightforward. My personalized Geology routine has continued to impress me. The everyday face wash, enriched with refreshing bergamot and juniper, deeply cleanses my skin without causing dryness or irritation. The retinol night cream has been my absolute favorite this month. Its powerful combination of retinol and hyaluronic acid effectively reduced the appearance of fine lines and made my skin noticeably smoother and healthier. Geology continues to stand out by focusing on proven, dermatologist-trusted ingredients. With an impressive 41 grooming awards from Men's Health, Esquire, and Oprah Daily, plus over 10,000 five-star reviews, their success speaks volumes. Right now, Geology is offering my viewers an amazing deal. 70% off your personalized skincare trial set, that's a full month's worth of custom skincare for just $12. You'll also receive a free gift and up to 50% off additional products. Don't miss this opportunity to improve your skin health effortlessly. Click my link and use the code provided in the description to claim this incredible offer from Geology. Your skin will definitely thank you. Fast forward to the present day. The Permian Giants remain hidden beneath the gentle surface of the Sydney Basin. Generations came and went, unaware of the sleeping calderas below. Farmers tilled fields above ancient volcanoes, and towns sprouted over what were once magma chambers. To the naked eye, nothing unusual interrupts the tranquil rural landscape near Rylestone and Loo in New South Wales. Yet beneath foot and hoof lies a geological secret of staggering proportions. The Barra Creek caldera, about 4 by 4 kilometres in size, and the Three Hills Caldera, 3.5 by 3.5 kilometers, have remained almost perfectly preserved under the sedimentary cover. Their circular outlines and internal structures, unmarred by erosion, are effectively time capsules from the early Permian. Such preservation is exceedingly rare. It required just the right conditions. Where volcanic devastation was swiftly blanketed by sediment, protecting it from the relentless wear of wind and water through the ages. For geologists, the notion that VEI 7 scale calderas could hide intact beneath a basin in New South Wales was the stuff of legend. But clues to their existence began to surface as early as the 1980s. In 1989, explorers from CRA, Konzink Rio Tinto of Australia, 
panning through local streams, found traces of gold, copper and silver in the sediment draining the area. These geochemical breadcrumbs hinted at a mineral rich source upstream, perhaps an ancient hydrothermal system. At the time, attention was drawn to the promising silver lead zinc find now known as the Bowden Silver Deposit. Bowden's would turn out to be a gigantic silver load, currently 396 million ounces of silver equivalent in resources, the largest undeveloped silver deposit in Australia. Yet even as Bowden's was discovered, the Barra Creek anomaly, named for the creek where those metal rich grains were found, remained unresolved. Early prospectors noted highly altered and veined volcanic rocks in the Barra Creek area, suggesting a buried heat source, but they couldn't pinpoint any visible ore body. The Three Hills area, by contrast, gave no surface hint at all. It lay completely concealed beneath layers of sandstone and clay. For decades the buried giants kept their secrets close. It was not until modern times that science developed the tools to peer deep underground and unveil those ancient volcanoes. Silver Mines Limited, the company now spearheading exploration in the district, launched an ambitious geophysical campaign to map what lies beneath. In 2023, geologists and geophysicists crisscrossed the region with sensitive instruments, transforming the Earth into a giant echo chamber. The team completed a major 2D seismic survey, spanning nearly 96 kilometers, sending vibrations into the ground and recording the returning echoes. These seismic waves are like sonar through rock. As they pass through different layers, hard volcanic tuff, soft sediment, solid granite, they created a picture of the subsurface akin to a medical CT scan. What emerged on their monitors astonished the researchers. Distinct bowl-shaped depressions and circular faults far below, matching the size of calderas suspected from the earlier geologic model. The seismic lines revealed structural lows and shattered zones exactly where a collapsed magma chamber would be expected, confirming that multiple caldera structures lay hidden within the ancient rollstone volcanics. Other tools added to the revelation. Magnetic surveys detected subtle anomalies. The Three Hills area, for instance, is rimmed by younger intrusions that gave off strong magnetic signals, tracing the outline of a caldera's edge beneath the cover. Gravity data helped differentiate dense volcanic rocks from lighter sedimentary layers, outlining the caldera shapes by their mass differences. VTEM electromagnetic surveys scanned for conductive minerals, and high resolution digital elevation models picked out faint topographic patterns. All these disparate clues, when layered together with computer modeling, unveiled a coherent picture. At least five enormous volcanic craters from the Permian era preserved underground. Two stood out in focus, Barra Creek and Three Hills, both part of the broader Bowdens volcanic complex, and they've never been drilled or studied before. Modern clues emerged from multiple datasets, converging on the same astonishing conclusion. Key evidence included seismic reflections, geochemical anomalies, such as historic stream sediment samples at Barra Creek, carrying gold greater than 10 parts per billion and silver suggesting that mineral-laden fluids once flowed through these volcanic structures. And geological mapping. Limited outcrop mapping on what little of the Rylestone volcanics is exposed showed hydrothermal breaches and quartz veins with pyrite, iron sulphide, and gossen, the oxidized remnants of sulphide minerals. These finds are telltale signs of an ancient hydrothermal system, possibly on the margins of the cold eras. Each dataset alone offered just a fragment of the story, but together they resolved into a clear narrative. Deep beneath the rolling hills lies a cluster of volcanoes that blew themselves apart, then collapsed and vanished under sediment, only to be found again by the keen eyes and ears of modern geology. Amid this newfound understanding, the Barra Creek Caldera and Three Hills Caldera have taken centre stage as targets of intense scientific interest. The Barra Creek Caldera measures about 4 kilometres by 4 kilometres, and shows evidence of being preserved by silicification. Its rocks hardened by silica-rich fluids, which likely helped shield it from erosion. The seismic data indicates that important fault structures controlling the Bowden silver mineralization continue right through the Barra Creek Caldera. Along these structures, silver mines geologists have already found quartz veins laced with pyrite and gossonous coatings, clear indicators that hot metal-bearing fluids once moved here. Though only a few rock and soil samples have been collected so far, assays are pending to reveal if traces of silver, gold or copper 
linger in those veins. It is a tantalising hint that Barra Creek could host an undiscovered precious metal deposit, perhaps even a Bowden's lookalike, a twin to the nearby Silver Lode. The area saw only minimal exploration historically, so it remains virtually untouched since its fiery creation eons ago. Now for the first time, scientists are mapping it in detail and preparing to probe its depths with drilling. The air is thick with anticipation of what secrets the core samples might reveal. Just a few kilometres away, the Three Hills Caldera presents a different but equally captivating story. This caldera, 3.5 by 3.5 kilometres, is entirely hidden beneath Sydney Basin sediments. Not a single outcrop of its volcanic rock touches the surface. No drill has ever pierced its layers, and even Silver Mine's seismic lines happen to skirt past it. Yet the collective data screamed its presence, a near-perfect circular structure outlined by gravity lows and magnetic highs. Intriguingly, Three Hills appears to be the most preserved structure of all, with a well-defined shape and a relatively uniform shallow depth. It is covered by roughly 60 to 100 metres of sandstones and shales, a thin veil by geological standards. Such minimal burial suggests that, beneath that cover, the ancient caldera's topography, the collapsed crater floor and its steep walls, might be largely intact. One can imagine an entire fossilised volcanic landscape down there, perhaps the remains of a central lava dome or a caldera lake bed, frozen in stone. Three Hills is thought to be ringed by major ring faults, now marked by slightly younger intrusions that poked up into the caldera's margins. These faults would have been highways for hydrothermal fluids after the eruption, and thus prime sites for mineral deposits. However, because the caldera has been sealed off for ages, any riches it holds have never been tapped or even seen. Silver Mines geologists consider Three Hills a high priority target precisely because of its untouched preserved nature, a geologic canvas awaiting its first brush with a drill bit. Together, Barra Creek and Three Hills form part of a greater puzzle. They are two of five calderas now identified in the district, the others being Coomba, Armentum, and the main Bowdens caldera itself. But Barra Creek and Three Hills are special in that they lie mostly hidden and have no modern exploration history. This means any discovery here would be truly new to science. As Dr. Joanne Battishill, Silver Mines Managing Director remarked, each of these caldera structures could potentially host Bowdens lookalikes, or if closer to the original heat source, copper gold mineralization. In other words, these ancient volcanoes might not only illuminate the geologic past, they could also be the key to the future of mineral exploration in the region. From an economic and geological perspective, the uncovering of Barra Creek and Three Hills Calderas is profoundly significant. The Bowdoin Silver Deposit, the original prize of the district, was already a remarkable find, being the only major deposit in the Permian volcanic rocks of New South Wales. Now the possibility that several more caldera-hosted systems exist opens an entirely new frontier. Calderas are not just volcanic craters, they are often the breeding ground of mineral deposits. When a caldera forms, the shattered ring faults and the still hot magma below become the plumbing for hydrothermal fluids. Superheated water rich in dissolved metal circulates for thousands of years after the eruption, depositing veins of silver, gold, copper, lead and zinc as it cools around the fractures. In world geology, many great ore deposits from the gold-rich craters of Nevada to the silver veins of Mexico were born this way, in the aftermath of colossal eruptions. The edges of calderas, known as ring margins, are especially fertile ground. Here the cooled magma collapse leaves deep cracks that act as conduits for mineralizing fluids. At Bowdens, for example, it is believed that a large granitic intrusion at depth sent up metal-bearing fluids to create the rich silver deposit near the caldera's edge. Now consider Barra Creek and Three Hills, untouched calderas of similar size and age with strong indications of hydrothermal alteration. The potential for precious metal mineralization here has geologists brimming with excitement. The presence of antimony in samples, noted by CRA back in 1989, is another intriguing clue, since antimony is often associated with epithermal gold-silver systems. The silicification preserving Barra Creek might also indicate extensive silica-rich hot spring activity, which often accompanies bonanza-grade silver or gold veins in other caldera environments. Meanwhile, Three Hills' complete burial could mean it was capped and sealed quickly, 
potentially locking in any mineral deposits below without surface leaching. It's as if nature hid away a vault, potentially filled with veins of galena, lead ore rich in silver, and sphalerite, zinc ore with silver, or perhaps even native gold in quartz, and then buried it for eons, waiting for discovery. For the scientific community, beyond the lure of wealth, these calderas represent a pristine laboratory. Because they are so well preserved, geologists can study an ancient volcanic system in 3D, almost as if it was at the time of the eruption. Every layer of ash, every intrusive dike cutting through, and every mineral vein is a clue to the dynamics of Permian volcanism in eastern Australia. The fact that these structures sat at the edge of the Lachlan origin, an older geological belt, means they might also inform us about how continents were evolving back then, as volcanic arcs and basins interacted. This discovery is rewriting geological maps of New South Wales. What was once thought to just be boring old sediment on the surface is now known to hide explosive secrets beneath. Imagine standing on a quiet hillside near Rylestone today. The breeze rustles through eucalyptus trees and cattle graze calmly. Beneath your feet, spanning several kilometres, are the remains of gargantuan calderas. Volcanic craters born in fire when Earth's continents were still coming together. It fills one with humility to realise that the ground we consider solid and enduring has undergone such radical transformations. Beneath these green hills lie a hidden world, a world forged by unimaginable fury, then lost to time. As the story of these hidden calderas unfolds, it carries a blend of wonder and promise. There is the wonder of peering into Earth's deep past, seeing in our mind's eye the eruption columns towering perhaps 30 kilometers high, the pyroclastic flows turning day into night, and then the centuries of quiet burial that followed. And there is the promise that these ancient structures might yet contribute to our future, perhaps through discoveries of new mineral resources that could power technologies or economies. In the grand timeline of Earth, 290 million years is but a chapter, yet one that we are only now learning to read. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.